A long time ago, there was a huge apple tree. A little boy loved to come and play around it every day. He climbed to the treetop, ate the apples, took a nap under the shadow. He loved the tree and the tree loved to play with him. Time went by the little boy had grown up and he no longer played around the tree every day. One day, the boy came back to the tree and he looked sad. Come and play with me, the tree asked the boy. I am no longer a kid, I don't play around trees anymore. The boy replied, I want toys. I need money to buy them. Sorry, but I don't have money, but you can pick all my apples and sell them. Then you will have money. The boy was so excited. He grabbed all the apples on the tree and left happily. The boy never came back after he picked the apples. The tree was sad. One day, the boy returned and the tree was so excited. Come and play with me, the tree said. I don't have time to play. I have to work for my family. We need a house for shelter. Can you help me? Sorry but I don't have a house. But you can chop off my branches to build your house. So the boy cut all the branches of the tree and left happily. The tree was glad to see him happy. The tree was again lonely and sad. One hot summer day, the boy returned and the tree was delighted. Come and play with me, the tree said. I am sad and getting old. I want to go sailing to relax myself. Can you give me a boat? Use my trunk to build your boat. You can sail far away and be happy. So the boy cut the tree trunk to make a boat. He went sailing and never showed up for a long time. Finally, the boy returned after he left for so many years. Sorry, my boy. But I don't have anything for you anymore. No more apples for you, the tree said. I don't have teeth to bite, the boy replied. No more trunk for you to climb on, I am too old for that now, the boy said. I really can't give you anything, the only thing left is my dying roots, the tree said with tears. I don't need much now, just a place to rest. I am tired after all these years, the boy replied. Good. Old Tree Roots is the best place to lean on and rest. Come, come sit down with me and rest. The boy sat down and the tree was glad and smiled with tears. This is a story for everyone. The tree is our parent. When we were young, we loved to play with mom and dad. When we grew up, we left them only come to them when we need something or when we are in trouble. No matter what, Parents will always be there and give everything they can to make you happy. You may think the boy is cruel to the tree but that is how all of us are treating our parents. Once upon a time in ancient Greece, there was a man called Byzas. Byzas was the son of Nisos, the king of Megara, a city in Greece. My son, said King Nisos one day, it is time for you to go out and make your way in the world. Find your own land and build a city there. I will make you happy, father, said Byzas. So Byzas went out with his men and looked for land. But wherever they looked, there were problems. In the first place, there were thieves, men who stole from travelers. In the next place, there was bad weather, baking sun and ice-cold rain, that meant they could not plant food. In the third place, there were monsters that ate children alive. I need help, said Byzas. We have traveled for months and months. And we have found no place to build a city. So Byzas traveled to Delphi. There, there was the Oracle of Apollo. The Oracle of Apollo was a woman who spoke with the god Apollo and saw the future. She gave advice to men from all over Greece, and her advice was always good. But if you did not follow her advice well, or if you did not respect the gods, you could end up worse than before. 
Still, Bizes had to go, because he had no other ideas. Oh, great oracle of Apollo. I have come all the way from Megara to speak to you. My father, King Nisos, has told me to go out and build a city. But wherever I go, there are thieves, bad weather and monsters. Please tell me, where should I go to build my city? The oracle closed her eyes and said nothing for several minutes. Bizes worried that he had said something wrong. But finally, she opened her eyes and spoke. I have asked Apollo what to do. The message is clear, you will build your city on the land opposite to the land of the blind. Bizes left Delphi confused. He did not understand the oracle's message. The land of the blind. What did it mean? He asked his men, and they gave him many ideas. One said that it might mean window blinds, a kind of curtain. But that was too easy. Another said that it might mean a foreign land. But why would Apollo want Bizes to build his city in a foreign land? For months, Bizes and his men traveled around, looking for the land of the blind. Everywhere they went, they asked people about it. But nobody knew where it could be. One day, they came to the Bosporus, a strait. They took their ship to Chalcedon, a city on one side of the strait, and rested there. It was a horrible place. The streets were dirty and full of thieves and drunk people. That night, Bizes drank and drank and drank. He felt hopeless because he had no idea where the land of the blind was. He could not go home to his father empty-handed, and he did not know what to do. The next day, feeling hungover and sad, he walked up a big hill on the side of the city. From the top of the hill, he could look out over all the houses and across the strait to the other side. Bizes gasped. How can it be? On the other side of the strait, opposite Chalcedon, was a magical land. The land was green, with many beautiful flowers and trees holding beautiful fruit. Wild sheep, pigs, cows and horses walked around, fat and healthy. There were rivers and lakes with beautiful clear water. How can these people live in Chalcedon when such a magical land sits opposite them? They must be blind. Suddenly, Bizes remembered the words of the Oracle of Apollo, you will build your city on the land opposite to the land of the blind. Bizes started laughing. I've found it. I've finally found it. He ran down the hill and shouted to his men, get on the ship. We are crossing the strait. The men, confused, did what he said. When they arrived at the magical land they laughed and cheered. There, Bizes built the city of Byzantium. It was a place of riches and magic. Over the years, the city grew in size and importance. Today, it is called Istanbul, which means towards the city. Because men from all around the world come there still.